Today's journey is the Tango Peninsula, where one of Japan's highest concentration of centenarians live on a lush, volcanic landscape that rose out of the sea 15 million years ago and is now registered as a UNESCO Global Geopark. On the southeast is one of the world's natural wonders, Amano Hashidate, a naturally occurring land bridge that formed over the course of thousands of years. The result of nature's efforts is a 3.6 kilometer path covered in pine trees with white sand beaches on both sides, and one of UNESCO's world's most beautiful bays. Another one of UNESCO's world's most beautiful bays is just up the coast. Ine Bay contains a rare collection of boathouses built right on the water. This Japan heritage village is protected from the Japanese sea by mountains, resulting in calm waters, small tidal fluctuations, and safe beds for fish to thrive. The northern coastline of the Tango Peninsula is a massive outdoor art museum, formed by the earth, carved by the sea. One of these natural exhibits, Tatewa, is a rare volcanic formation sitting at the junction of the sea and the mouth of the Takano River. Its presence has inspired and guided humans for generations, used as a beacon for sea merchants looking to trade upriver. Even the beaches here contain secrets that are millions of years old. Fossils can be found in the sand, in the rock beds, tidal flats, and wave cut platforms. The Tango Peninsula, because of its close proximity to the Eurasian continent, is believed to be Japan's oldest kingdom, where rice was first planted and sacred sake was first brewed. The people here age slowly. They are a window into a slow life that has endured thousands of years. The area itself is ancient, a window millions of years into the past.
often imitated but rarely spotted, the Maiko is the four-leaf unicorn of Kyoto residents with less than a hundred in the world today. They make snow leopards seem a nuisance. And like wildlife, they're difficult to photograph. What is a Maiko, you ask? An apprentice geisha. Except in Kyoto, they prefer the term geiko, so an apprentice geiko. This is a tea house. It's one place where Maiko entertain guests. Side, they have my favorite thing, Richard Farmer and cushions and Maiko. These are Maiko's business cards. You should always receive it with two hands. A kimono varies in weight from season to season. The one that she's wearing now is a summer kimono and weighs about five or six kilograms. Her obi belt is about seven meters in length. She wanted to become a Maiko because her mother from Fukui Prefecture was also a Geiko. She's 18 years old. This is her third year training as a Maiko. She does all of her makeup herself and it takes her only about 30 minutes. Her hair is her own hair and she has to go and have it set once a week. It takes about 40 minutes. Her hair ornaments change every month. This month is June, so she's wearing a hydrangea ornament. So this is a classic Maiko game. If you touch the pillow with your hand, you're out. <laughs> if you touch the pillow with your Dude, how do you explain this game? There are three ways to lose. Pick it up more than three times, put your fist on it, or put your flat hand on the cushion. Oh, I lost. Tissue, tissue, tissue. The dance we just saw was about the four seasons of Kyoto. This is matcha, powdered green tea. It's a little bit bitter, so it's always served with a cake that you eat first. Mm. Pick up the bowl, put it in your palm, turn 180 degrees, and drink. Finish with a little slurp. Wipe with your fingers, turn back, and done. So you might have noticed she was pretty cool, but Richard, why are the Maiko on the street so cold? Because you're not their customer. Ah. But in a large sense, that's what you're paying for. King. Sharing a fleeting moment with a rare and talented young woman. Hi, Brits!
風呂敷の包み方、ペットボトル包み。風呂敷を裏にして広げ、中央にペットボトルを置きます。A と C をペットボトルの口の上で一回深めに結んだ後、輪を作るように先端で真結びをして取っ手部分を作ります。B と D を交差させて手前に回します最後に B と D を真結びして出来上がりです And it's matte, it's not shiny. If you see a whisk that's shiny, it's a wrong bamboo already. Now, on the way to Mr. Nakata, who is making whisks from bamboo,、um, you can see some woods of bamboo which are fairly okay. There are very few left in Japan because people just、uh, were making cars and cameras and didn't care. About handicraft, about the traditional craft, like with the. Hello, I'm Miki. I'm Ralph. From m i k o t i Japan. So, this time, where are we now? At Mr. Nakata's shop, the whisk maker, the best in Japan. Konnichiwa. <laughs> で一番茶せんのこの味泡が綺麗で味が立つそれを味削りという工程がね味削,、はい、味削りが茶せんの一番のその腕、はい、それから今行くとこはねうちの職人のグループやから、うん、これが高山の伝統工芸で、えー、世界一日本一でそういうとにこのマークあってねそれがあんた、えー、こ,こんな高いのあかんやねこれがうーっと高くなったり安くなするとそれは低いところも高いところもできるからということはなぜか言うと材料コンセプトこれ最初からも決まってるわけで糸が上上がるほどこれミリコになるやこのね節とこの糸の距離が長い茶線はみんなアウトね
れ硬い硬い硬い硬い薄いこれ柔軟性でここねこのこのこのバネねこのバネこれができる人はないねそれが茶線の生命線いきましょう生命線を見るいきましょうありがとうございましたなおみやこれが茶線バンブーベースこれが今言ってたあれが左前の一番のね中心母体。